This is the story about the adventures of a man named Candid who grows up in the German castle of Westphalia. He is sensible and bright, taking to the philosophy of Pangloss, a philosopher who believes that all things happen for good. Candid gets run out of Westphalia by the Baron after expressing a romantic interest in the beautiful Cunegon, the Baron's daughter. Still, Candid is determined to reunite with her someday. After joining the Bulgarian army, Candid again runs, but meets Pangloss, who is disfigured and sickly. Pangloss tells Candid that Westphalia was attacked and that everyone died. The two of them travel to Portugal with the aid of a friendly man, who dies in a terrible storm at sea. After surviving an earthquake, Candid and Pangloss are convicted and each sentenced. Candid to be whipped and shot, Pangloss to be hanged. Pangloss is hanged, but Candid is saved by an old woman, who heals his wounds. The old woman takes Candid to Cunegon, who survived the attack on Westphalia, and explains how she is now the property of two other men. Candid slays the two men who own Cunegon, and he takes her and the old woman to the New World to escape persecution. As they are sailing, the old woman shares her journey from princess to slave. When they arrive in the New World, the local governor sees Cunegon and wants to marry her. But before Candid can protest, he sees a ship arrive, whose intentions are to arrest him for the slains. Candid leaves with a local guide, Kakambo, and they find refuge in a nearby settlement. There, Candid discovers that Cunegon's brother is a commanding officer, having also survived the attack on Westphalia. However, the men fight and Candid stabs Cunegon's brother before fleeing. Candid and Kakambo then find a city of gold, El Dorado. Although the city is full of riches, the people live in peace and harmony. Candid and Kakambo enjoy their time in the city, but decide to take some of the riches with them to buy back Cunegon. However, on their trip back, they lose most of their gold-carrying sheep and are forced to leave the riches behind. Candid decides to split off from Kakambo, instructing him to take most of the gold, buy Cunegon, and meet him in Venice. After his gold is stolen by a Dutch sea captain, Candid decides to travel to France with Martin, a philosophical man who believes the worst in mankind. In France, Candid and Martin run into Kakambo, who is now a slave to a former sultan. Kakambo tells them that Cunegon is a slave in Constantinople and has grown ugly. Still, Candid is determined to see her. As they are sailing to Constantinople, the group discovers that Cunegon's brother and Pangloss are rowing the boat. They land in Constantinople and Candid sees Cunegon, ugly and beaten, and the old woman. He buys them, still wanting to marry Cunegon. In the end, Candid buys a small Turkish farm with the rest of his money and they all live on the farm together. Initially, readers should be able to identify the author's use of satire as social commentary on money, relationships, slavery, and the evilness in people. Yet the strongest satire is saved for religious commentary. In the story, religious figures are often portrayed as hypocrites who display acts of lust, greed, and selfishness. This story also portrays the incomplete story. Often, readers are led to believe that characters have died, but in fact, those characters survive and return by the end. This demonstrates the survivability of humans as organisms, but also an exciting literary device, the limited narrator. What this does is limit the reader's knowledge of the world and create new surprises that the reader and main protagonist share together. Through all of Candid's misadventures, his belief that everything works for good acts as a strong constant. This philosophy, in a way, is mocked by the author as Candid takes it to extremes in some cases. This ultimately leads to the conclusion of the story where Candid realizes that, in the end, it doesn't really matter whether events, good or bad, work out. Ultimately, we as humans are meant to work and experience, not to think or judge whether our experiences are for the benefit of ourselves and those around us. Thank you.